live on YouTube, but Facebook is taking its time. I'm going to go anyway. Yay! We're here. Thunderbirds are go. Just <laughs> have to catch up, won't they? Yes. They will just have to catch up. Good morning, everybody. How are you? I have no idea what the day of the week it is. No, it's so confusing. It's Tuesday. It is Tuesday, isn't it? It is Tuesday. It's Textile Tuesday. Textile Tuesday. So, good morning. Welcome. Um, I'm Natasha from Natasha Makes. This is the lovely Jane Orcock. Hello. Jane, I'm turning this round because that looked rather scruffy on the camera, so it makes it look neater that way. <laughs> Do you know what? We are going to hold this out in a minute because I don't think it matters, Jane, how many times we say to people that it's well over two metres wide. Mm. So it's like two metres 30 or something. Yeah. You can't, it's a visual thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and for us older ladies, we can't visualise what two metre 30 is. If we said three yards, we'd be like, oh yeah, I know what that is. I don't know if two metres 30 is three yards, so don't <laughs> just kind of <laughs> put that in the mix. Oh, I don't know. It could be because of it being American. We had this with ribbon, didn't we, yes, yesterday? We did. We're like, why have they sent us 13.7 metres of something? I'm like, it's five yards, mm. 15 yards rather. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it makes sense and sometimes whoosh, yes, and we have to do maths. But good morning to you, you don't have to do any maths. All you have to do is watch, sit back. Jane has done the maths for you. I have. Um, Jane sent me a message on, I can't remember if it was Thursday or Friday when you were busy creating this. And you yes. went, it's taken me a little longer. I had to maths. <laughs> um, at which point we all went, oh, <laughs> that's fine. You have maths. It is beautiful. Yes. I then said you were the finished block, didn't I? I went, the maths works. <laughs> Hooray! It's lovely when it all works. There is that moment, isn't yeah. there? <sighs> Thank goodness for that. Beautiful. So, this is it. You can't actually quite see it all. It is a big one. It's a big, beautiful one. Yes. Now, I had this conversation on Create and Craft at the weekend whereby people say, I don't know what to do with mm. big, bold, K-facet collective prints. Yeah. And we go, you don't have to do much no. because in here you have allowed those big prints to really really shine yes you've done clever stuff around the outside there's no taking that away from no you. but it's just showcasing framing those beautiful prints and letting them sing really which is what they singing. need to do they really are i yeah. love your color choices for this today should we lift it up yeah it is big but then as I did, as we've said, we wanted to show off the... the and care. this has got some of the brand new, I love this, you've mixed old and new. Yes. So we've got a little bit of koi polloi in there, but we've also got these fabulous, fabulous paisley flowers. Because people kept saying to me at the weekend, well, what would you do with the big paisley flowers? And I, I said, sash something with it because yeah, you can got see... A, like a vine yeah. pattern going through it. But I love how you've put these in here in the corners, in each of the corners, I've just clocked that. Yeah. Beautifully, beautifully, beautifully and done. I tr there's four, <coughs> four in the collection and two are sort of dark colours. Yeah. So I've put those opposite and then two are paler, so I've put those opposite. There is a little bit of thought goes into the fabric placement. <laughs> there is, no, I love it. And then you've got the step flower, top yeah. and bottom, and then one of my all-time favourites is the embroidered shawl. Oh, I love that one. We and got an extra just... bolt of it, didn't we, because yeah. it was so popular. There isn't much left of it, but because we've you, we've given you the fat quarter of each of those prints in the in the quilt kit, we've been able to sort of use up these last little bits of the koi polloi and the and the now, beautiful see the koi embroidery. polloi is another favourite. Yes, I've really enjoyed it. So Freddie's got a swimming bag out of it. It's a gorgeous fabric. I'm standing off camera. I've just realised. Josh's son, who has got fish fish tanks. Yeah, I made him a koi polloi bean bag. Super. Like it's just been such a popular it's one. It's a our lovely, home. it's a, a real fun print, and I mean, you know, your beach bags and things like that. Your All lovely big beach bag, fabulous. Perfect. perfect, perfect. However, today it is in the quilt kit. It is a big kit. Um, I'm going to say hello to everyone, Jane, um, at the risk of upsetting my technology. <laughs> uh, but then we're going to show you. I've got a few bolt ends. There'll be more added throughout the day, as we tend to do on on show days, because I think because. I still have in my head what Kay from Brandon say about a quilt should be as beautiful on the back as it is on the front. Definitely. And so for me, I think if we provide you with large swathes of fabric 
at affordable prices because it's the end of the bolt. Yeah. It's not enough for a show. And then you get to you get to have something really beautiful on the back of your quilt, should you wish, or dressmaking. It opens it up for dressmaking too. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. Or just thing. have it in your stash. You know, you might want it for borders, or you, you might, might just, just want it, need to have it. <laughs> Do you know got what? to have that in my stash. I still have fabric that I can't. I no, can't I've got use. lots. I've got lots, that particularly Tilda's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Tilda, I'm shocker for. Yeah. Shocker for it. Because it's too nice to cut into. <laughs> um, ridiculous. Sophie's making blueberry muffins this afternoon. I hope Ooh. they're better than any of the kind of ones that I make. I love blueberry muffins. Yeah. Um, Karen's here. Auntie Lizzie's is here. Um, Jane's here, Joy's here, Sue's here. She finished her corner fabric quilt top and it's stunning. Wonderful. Nice. Julia's here. She says, good morning, good evening all. Yeah, because all the Aussie lot have joined us. Oh, good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Uh, we have got Joe here as well and Kim and Jimmy and Jan and Teresa uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, and Claire. She says, lovely quilt, Jane. Thank you. Lovely quilt. Isn't it a lovely quilt? Uh, now, talking of lovely quilts, I made a heart-wrenching decision. Yes, I thought you were going to pill for this one because it's your colours. I know it's my colours and it's all the fabrics that I absolutely love. But I have so many quilts. I was going to say you've got enough. But no, that's not, that's not the right word. You've got plenty of quilts. There's probably room for a few more, but... I might really regret this. And if yeah, I do, so I'm like looking at one. it thinking... Well, We're all looking at it going, <laughs> ooh. Now, this sold out in record time the other week, didn't it? Yeah. Um, this is the thread I'm wearing. This is Jane's beautiful, beautiful corner quilt. This is the corner cabin quilt. Yeah. It's done like log cabin, but you start with your square in the corner. Make the blocks. It was a lovely quilt to make. The fabrics were gorgeous. It's a fairly quick one to do, and it just looks fabulous. It's absolutely stunning. Mm. Now, we've only got one of these. This has been quilted by you, done by you. It's backed in a lovely green. Probably clashy a bit, but it doesn't matter. But I would be hanging that on the wall. Mm. So I'm not worried if it doesn't sell, because I'll quite have to keep it. <laughs> but I did just think, oh, this needs to be loved. It does. It needs to be loved. So if you would like that, that is being loaded this morning. Um, and until then, it's going to sit under there and I can stroke it and weep. Um, so the other thing is, let's look at bolt ends and let's, before we get onto that, Jane, this. Um, I have bought a few bolts of this, I'm not going to lie, because I really want you to get really incredible quality and incredible value on the warm and white. The warm and white, um, it's a whitened, it, it, it doesn't have the natural colour. It's been, I don't know if it's actually been bleached. I'm pretty sure that it hasn't because they don't. They do everything as naturally as they can. Warm and White has all the characteristics you love in Warm and Natural. It says it's made of the same needle punch tradition that made Warm and Natural the preferred backing. Oh, it is backing. bleached cotton. Yeah, so it is a bleached cotton fibre, um, but it just means that, and the reason that we've pulled it for this is because it lifts. Yeah, so when you've got a, a predominantly a white background, white background sometimes, background. yeah. Sometimes if you put the natural colours in, it'll dull it dull down it, a bit. Yeah. Whereas the um, warm and white just lets those bright colours shine. Yes, yes, yes. So it says here, ideal for light and pastel <coughs> fabrics, excellent as an exterior fabric as well. So if you're doing snowmen and things like that, you can yeah. use it for beards or Father Christmases and stuff like that. Um, so it's great for clothing as well because it's lovely and lightweight. Um, you can quilt or tie up to 10 inches apart yeah this has got a good hang together so hasn't it? this center square here you could quilt around the edge of there and you wouldn't need to do anything in the middle the wadding will hold together sometimes when you get um slightly less expensive waddings if you don't quilt them quite closely together they start to f to pull apart mm. and your wadding disappears from from the inside but with this one 10 inches that's good. Quilt round there, it's not going to go anywhere. That is really good. I'm just trying to look for the proportions. It's predominantly cotton. The, the little bit of polyester is the bit that holds it together. It's probably an 80 20. That tends to be the combination when they add polyester to it. Hang on, Gemma's messaged me. 
Oh, crikey, the corner cabin quilt's just sold. Oh. Um, <laughs> we're not sad, we're very happy for you. <laughs> we're just a bit sad for us. Just a bit jealous. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> now, so, okay, so if we do it this, so, so we've done this. Jane said you're going to need two metres across. Yes. So that is... The finished size quilt is um, approximately 71. So you inches. need an eight, yeah, seven, so an 80 inch wide piece is going to give you plenty. Which is what this is. Yeah. Now what you don't realise is that if we hold it there, Jane, that is touching yeah. the floor. Yes, it is. But... Well, you can see how tall Natasha is. It comes yeah. to the top of her head nearly. Um, so that is it touching the floor and that's it in half. Yes. So you've got double that height. You've got it again. Yeah. So. You, you know, this size quilt would probably just over half way. So you've still got enough wadding to do another quilt, probably. Well, that's what is so Push incredible about this. Now, things. this should have been well over £60 for this. Mm -hmm. Well over £60. Yeah. What have you done? <laughs> You're too generous for your own good sometimes, you are. I just, I might have done it at 39 What? I might have. Amazing. Well, it just, you know, it's that hidden cost of quilting, isn't it? Yes. It's, and, and I don't like hidden costs, so I'd rather just get it out in the open and then you can just have it. And But that was why I bought it, was so that I could pass on. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, if you want to wait and buy from other people and buy elsewhere and pay more, that's up to you. Like, I totally get that. Jane's a wizard folding this as well. She does it beautifully. <laughs> I don't. So I'm just going to put that somewhere else. Um, you know, there's no pressure for you to buy. It's just that if it's you... It's worth getting while it's on that. Do you know deal? what else I had in mind for it? <laughs> I've got I've a bit of I've got a bit of flair. Um, were the... Uh, come on. The quilts that I do where you chop into the sides. Oh, the rag, rag quilts. quilts, yes. Because I love those. Yes, they'd be beautiful in that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Should we have a look at these bolt ends? Let's. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I've got to try and see if I can turn over my technique. Yeah, you've got I've fluff got as well, haven't you? In that yeah. yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth. So that was super quick. I know. I know. Um, Lynn says hello to all the beautiful people out there. Yes. And hello, here. beautiful people. Hello, beautiful people. It's all a good thing. Right, let's see if I can change this here. Oh, look, Jane, technology, it works. Fabulous. Um, right, I think this is avocado. Yes. There was this or there was lime. I'm pretty sure that's not lime. No. I think lime was brighter. Now, what I can tell it's you about gorgeous. this <laughs> is that the only reason we don't know exactly what it is is because I had taken this for me. I think we looked at it and said, that looks really nice with the Lisa. Yeah. It looks really nice with Elisa. It also looks really nice with my sofa. <laughs> yes, that's and true. And that was why there was a big chunk of this put to one side when I got my new green sofa. Mm. Obviously, I haven't had time to do anything with it. So I'm like, this is silly. This is really silly. Somebody else could have this. And you're right, Jane. It looks phenomenal with the Lisa Chandler. It has exactly the right shade of greens in it. Not only that, but it also has that beautiful gold metallic and it ombres. I love this, and again, if this doesn't sell today, it's going to come down and it's going to stay with me, and I'm going to take that as, <sighs> yeah, meant to be. Yeah. It's beautiful. It goes dark to light into the middle, and then on the other side, it's the same, so it goes from light to dark. So you've got a strip down the middle, which is pale, and then it ombres out towards the salvage. It's a beautiful thing, Jane. It's a beautiful thing. So there is that, and that is 2.8 metres. Yeah, and it's got big these chunk. beautiful gold metallic splatters on it as well. And they just shine. They do. Now, um, I was going to cut this up into smaller pieces. It's a 2.6 metre piece, but I just thought, if anyone's dress make with that, yes, it's going to be absolutely perfect. It'd look rather fabulous on the back of a quilt as well. Oh, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you could alternate with the next one. Oh, yes. Which is your leopard print. Animal print one. And again, part of me was like, I was saving this to make pyjamas. Is it Lewis and Irene or is it? No, Lewis? it's not. It's Macawa. Macawa. Oh, lovely. It's Macawa. This is your leopard print natural from Macawa from around the world. Wonderful. Well, I mean, I say it's around the world. It came from just outside of London. No, but, but yeah. <coughs> yeah, but no, but. Yeah, but no, but. This is also an around the world one too. Um, so again, 
great fun either for dressmaking or backing your quilts or and just pleque, popping into you everything. Know, if you're doing an ice spy quilt, you're making zebras or anything. Oh, like yes, your mum made a beautiful ice spy quilt for yeah, your granddaughter. Yeah, she did. What day is her birthday? Saturday. Happy She'll birthday. Full one on Saturday. Happy birthday, Jane's granddaughter. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, festival hats, could you imagine? Oh, yeah, how cool. Yep, 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 yep. Um, Anna Maria Horner, housewarming in jade, two meters 30 on this. That's a beautiful fabric. Isn't it gorgeous? Now we've made bags and all sorts out of this. That's upside down, but you get the idea. Again, this is another one that climbs. Yes, you've got a really good border mm. on there because it, it lends itself really nicely. And if you wanted to do another version of this quilt, of course, you could frame those big blooms there. Absolutely. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm still thinking about those muffins. I really <laughs> wish I could cook. You made some lovely cupcakes, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so well, we had a little gathering on Saturday for Iris at um, my mum's house for our side of the family. I'm going up this weekend for Charlie's side of the family. Oh. I'm surprised. I'm, su I'm surprised that we've got any of this left because it was really popular. I know. I've only got one metre eighty left of it. I love the Dalmatian. No. Look. Look, look, and this one looks like um, she's. I'm going to say that she's a she because she's got lashes. Yes, and and chihuahuas. They do always have those boggly, boggly eyes. Yes, sort they of do. Look in odd directions. They do. It's just gorgeous. That is, and I love the colour tone of that. Do you know what my friend, her chihuahua, it's only like this big. It's just had an operation. It's cost her over twenty thousand. Oh my pounds. gosh. That's. Amazing. You just you just can't. No. You, just vet fees are insane, aren't they? Yeah. Just insane. It just makes you realise how lucky we are to have an NHS. I know. I know. She's gone, do you know what? She's hopping around like there was never a problem. Really ungrateful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. nah. You didn't do it for the gratitude now, did you? Um, this one. This one, again, I kind of feel sad because oh, I sort of... You've seen our fish tank, haven't you? Yes. We actually grow vegetables out of our fish tank. Yeah, it's amazing. They do because the fish take care of the roots. The roots go into the fish tank. It's like it's, it's a like hydroponics, a, really. a nutrient there as well. Yeah. Because obviously fish do what they do. And those go into the help to nutri nutrients in the plants. Our cucumber melons went crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. They, they just were nuts. Um, and we had some really nice chilli peppers out of it as well. Um, so I sort of wanted to do something just to celebrate fish. It's quite a fishy day, she's a little yeah. koi polloi in there. But I just, I love that, I don't, haven't seen with Tula Pink very much gold. No, she's not, she's, she's not known for her metallic, she's but she's not. done it in this collection. And she has up here, spurting out of the water hydrant with the dog collar on. The detail in here know, is lovely. It's just such fun. It really is. She just, she's got this lovely quirky humour to her fabrics that are so lovely. You I know just when you love think her fabric. She'd be a really good fun night out. Oh yes. Yeah. You've done an interview with her, haven't you? No, it wasn't me. I got Anna Roe Horner and John Scott got oh. Tula. Because she she's another person, isn't she, that yeah. doesn't give many not many. No, she's on my list of people I would really like to interview for sure. Um now this one. I made bags, so many bags out of this. Do you know which ones I made out this of this? Is fun. Um, this is 70% cotton, 30% linen. Yeah. Uh, you know the reversible round bag handle? Yes. Yeah. This. Perfect. Because they're all in Cornwall. I did it both colourways. And whenever I send the kids down to the shops, they go off with this bag. And I did it with hot tomato. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Which just was beautiful. This is your gator. And the, again, this is a pattern that at first you don't see necessarily the alligators because it's got this sort of spirally shape going through it. And then you suddenly think, hang on a minute. Yeah, there's good. alligators there. This is the Ruby Star Society. So we're talking Moda. Um, it is a cotton linen mix, but the cotton means it doesn't crease like linen does. Yeah. Which is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Um, so it's a heavier weight, so perfect for your bag making. Yeah, because it really it's, like it, for that. it's got a better um, wear to it as well, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So just love it, absolutely love it. This is the last bit of it. You'd make a gorgeous jacket. Can you imagine with just like you know, the gator panel down the middle? Yes. Oh, I hadn't thought about like a sort of like a little 
denim-y style jacket. I did look at it and go, is it too heavy for trousers? Mm -hmm. Well, what? No, because it's Could like you? jean fabric, isn't it? You Imagine. know, it's not... Wide palazzo pants. <laughs> You'd get away with it. <gasps> I'd look, I don't know what I'd look like, <laughs> but it would be, be funny. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm kind of wondering how kids describe mums having asked Emily, there was a message from one of the mums on the WhatsApp group, and, um, and I did ask Emily, oh, we, what does that mum look like? Which, which mum is it? Can yeah. you point her out? And she went, she's one of the skinny mums with marks on her face. I'm like, well, what sort of marks are we talking about? <laughs> and you know, you're just like, because there's one mum that's got some like tattoos on her face. Yeah. Like, is those sort of marks or no, like normal marks? <laughs> What's a normal mark? I, I think it's a mole. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I'm looking for a skinny woman with a couple of moles on her face. <laughs> and I like... <sighs> Don't you just love children? No, not always. Because <laughs> I still am no closer to knowing what this woman looks like. Absolutely none. My Isaac used to draw my mum with bright orange hair. Amazing. She hadn't got bright orange Amazing. hair. Amazing. It was an Albany colour. Wild Fox, I think the colour was called. But it was just like, every time he drew a picture of Granny, she got bright orange hair. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Emily drew something the other day that made it look like I had the most enormous norks you've ever seen. Um, and I was like, oh, oh wow. She's like, yes, do you like your necklace? I'm like, oh, your necklace. That's <laughs> what? what it is. <laughs> oh, bless her. You've got to ask them sometimes, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Bless them. I am going to go and sit over there to give you space. Lovely. Um, so that you can show everybody the kit. Because, again, it's one of those kits that you go... Is that it? <laughs> I might just buy it for the fabric. Yeah. Because it's rather lush. Nine fat quarters of cave. Who Oof. wouldn't want that in their stuff? Um, and we've done it at... A pretty cool price as well. Oh, for you. Well, I'm going to take my hand cream as well, Jane, because my hands are sore. So um, I'm going to go overhead so that you can see. Fabulous. Sophie, can you bake us some biscuits as well as the... <laughs> Just... <laughs> right. It's, a, it's got a lot of, of background fabric to it, so you get a nice chunk of white. I've gone with white with Cave. I think white works with Cave. We had a big conversation about this, We did, didn't, this, we? didn't we? We were talking... Cause I know that there's a few people that aren't in favour of a white background. They feel it's a bit stark, but we, I personally... No, we agreed on I this. I think Tash agrees with me. White yes, just do. lets the cave fabric sing, in it's, my opinion. I think you either go white or you go black yeah. with it. Um, you need that really stark contrast, I think, to let the fabrics do their job. In my opinion. No, I'm with you. I'm really yeah. with you on this. So we've got an, three metres of white fabric. That's a lot of white. That's a lot of white. Yeah. Then we've got the... Um, this is emerald, our plain emerald. There's a metre and a quarter in there. And there's enough for your binding as well. And that's the one that sort of like is the frame in the background. And then we've got a bit of the beautiful comb stripe. Look how that emerald matches that green. Um, that's the one I framed the actual prints with. I went for sort of like the green, emeraldy green, which sort of brought... With this, that colour is in all of the, f the fa fabrics that we've chosen. If you, the green yeah, if and you, orange. If you look at the back, you can really see how that green is the common colour. Yes. And, and there's, or there's orange flashes in it as well. I mean, particularly yeah, with the... the koi poloi. You know, this... Orange in, there's orange in all of them and the green so it's sort of there is a cohesion in there Jane you did not just throw this together I didn't I'm, I did think I'm about it I'm just going to say <laughs> thought was given and then you've got a fat quarter of each of these beautiful um, what, I'm, what I'm calling this Natasha what Which, is it oh it's gone out of my head oh paisley flower paisley flower that's it and it really is. Um, when I first looked at it, I did think Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> yes. Feed me yes. see more. Yes. Um, which has made me giggle and love it all the more. Yeah. So you've got the four colourways of that. As I say, there's sort of two darks, <coughs> two, two lighter <coughs> colours of that. 
And then we've gone with the step flower. And again, there's sort of a dark and a light of that colourway. And they're beautiful. I think these are such a lovely... They're, they're again, they're another versatile print, aren't they, that you can yeah. see that used in... And then our very favourite embroidered shawl, which we've used with Fussy Cut. One of the big prints there. You know you are lucky that oh, I let that go. That. You can use that for your, your centre flower. And then the two colourways of the koi polloi. And this is the last little bit of the koi polloi. I think we've used it up in, the, in this kit. So those are your nine cave fabrics. And from these, you're only going to need to cut your centre square. So you're going to have a lot <coughs> left over from your fabrics for each of those. You could almost make two if you weren't too worried about fussy cutting. No, absolutely not. Or you'd just have a huge amount left to do all sorts yeah. of other patchwork goodies. Oh, you'd have goodies. lots of lots of fabric left over for other other projects, if which you is are always nice to have. For this kit, you will find it at natashamakes.com. You can click on Textile Tuesday at the top of the page, um, or you can search, pop in the little search bar, um, what have you called this? The trellis? Moroccan, Moroccan trellis. trellis. Yeah. When we were on holiday in Morocco, the holiday that should have been in Cuba. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's that another, one. That's another story. Yes. Um, there were some beautiful tiles. We went and visited some of the um, old souk houses and um, a music, carpet museum. Going to the carpet museum was lovely, particularly because, you know, I'm a very much a textile person and um, one of the palaces and the tile work in the palace was just Stunning. amazing if you like English paper pieces and you need inspiration going to Morocco yeah. is just you yeah. know everything you need so yeah there was lots of inspiration there and the, and, and I get the colours with Kaif give me that Moroccan vibe as well. He's it's, got a whole... That, it's such a, they're such sunshine yeah. that, that really, they're really vibrant. There's, there's a whole, um, he's done a whole book on quilts in Morocco. Yeah, hasn't it he? doesn't you know, surprise so this me yeah. because his, his fabrics just work beautifully. Um, I have to say, Jane, my baking is getting abuse on Facebook. Really? Guess who by? Might be the Miss Pinfield Thomas. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. She's asked Sophie for the for the recipe, but says that we'll probably let Jane bake them, as <laughs> Natasha makes. She does Doesn't not bake. bake. Somebody Rude. sent us a parcel with that one once, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, and uh, to be to be honest, it did ha it did have gin in it, so we didn't mind. I tell you what, Natasha makes beautiful soup. That's that's all I'm going to say. I've, I've perfected this. In fact, Gemma even asked me for the recipe this morning. Yeah. I had two days without making that keep you well soup and I got ill. It's, it's no just, it's so flavoursome. Mm. It really is. Mm. So this is the block. It's quite big, as you can see. We can go overhead. Tom. Oh, sorry. Yes, I was just reading someone's pet hate. <laughs> there we go. That's a block. Oh, Jane. We make nine of those and they're sashed. Can I just sash that with the green or the green or the comb stripe and just have it as a really big cushion? You could. Okay, good. Yeah, absolutely. This is the thing. You could make one block and make it into a cushion if you just wanted to try the block. So it's all squares and strips of fabric. <coughs> it's not complicated. It's not a beginner quilt purely because of the size of it and there's quite a lot of seam matching that's not to say if you're a beginner you couldn't have a go at it right but just you're going to need to take your time right and you're just going to have to think about your seam matching i'm going to give you all the hints and tips i can while we're going through making the block today okay so that it should make it easier for you but it's not complicated it's not you know there's not a lot of complex things in it it's a big quilt. We've gone nine by nine, but you could make four by four if you wanted to. You could oh. just do three in a row and make it a runner for the bottom of your bed. Oh, nice. You know, or a table runner. There's lots of options there. Or well, as Natasha said, make a nice big cushion just with one block. <laughs> I 
you say yesterday about bringing in the um, where we were going to put the filing cabinets when they finally come in because yeah. they're still in storage when they come across it's like oh well they could go in the hall but they're not going to look very pretty <laughs> like, we could drape the quilts over it and we decided bed runners were better yes because otherwise it just looked like we'd packed the place <laughs> yes. up yeah. draping things Miss don't, Havisham don't just style um, just sheets over everything yeah yeah right so I fussy cut the centre squares you don't have to but I think it really sort of sets off the fabric and gives a frame to the block Okay, so just a very quick question, but I'm going to shut up in a minute and let you do this. Uh, but if you were to do three in a row, yes, you c could you use um, Insole Bright, yes, and have it as a as a, a as a table runner, yes, and then in those dark middle bits, you could use that to put your hot pots. Yeah, absolutely. Can yeah. You? Okay. Just um, it. If you were going to use Insul Bright, I don't think you'd get it out of the width. I'm not sure how the wide Insul Bright is, but it's you look at it at 71. For the three blocks together, it's 71. Mm. They're just over 20, I think they're about 23 wide with the sashing and everything on. So that's how big it would be. You could do it with two. You could just do one as a table centre and add a few more borders mm -hmm. if you wanted to. Okay, so we've got options there. But if you were going to get the install bright, I would get two metres just so okay. that you've got that long piece because I'm not sure of the widths of the install bright. And then you bright. leftovers do table mats. Yeah. Do, nice. Yeah. You could make that part, couldn't you, and make mats to yeah. match. Okay, got it. Thank you. There's all... This is what I like about patchwork is you can make a block and then there's lots of different variations, isn't there, that you can use. Yeah. Right, so fussy cutting. Yes. I thought we'd have a little bit of a one-on-one -on, -one on fussy cutting today because, you know, there's not enough to show you. <laughs> I got really excited because I thought we had one of the irons left, um, but actually, no, it's all this one. That's good. It's already That's gone. Good. So sorry about that. Um, um, I Just use my stripology. <coughs> As you should, because stripologies are f fabulous. The thing with the stripology is it's got um, a 10 inch square on it. Let's yeah. turn it around the right way. It's actually, your stripology is slightly different to mine. I've got the XL, that's why. That's why. Um, but if you. And this one actually has got. It's got a ten and a half and then a nine. Oh, it'll be nine and a half, which is what you need. There's a white mark here on this one. Mine had got a ten inch square on it, my my stripology. Just lift it up for me a second. If you just lift and flick it towards me so I can just Yeah, you've got you've got on the other side you've got the black full inches yeah. there. So I looked at the 10 inch square knowing that it's a slightly smaller than a 10 inch, it's a nine and a half inch centre square that you start with. So you've got on here, you've got the cross hatches as well for the middle of the, of the, um, the square. So you can really, you really can mm. look at this. Just remember that your quarter inch seam allowance. So if you want to get this sort of like rope vine part in, you just want to make sure that you've got at least quarter of an inch on the side <coughs> of that so that you can so that you can see you'll be able to still see that within your pattern and then you can also look to see that whether you've got more or less equal equidistance from the top and the bottom you can just move that up slightly and again on the side you want to have a bit similar similar either side and then what you can do is you can just cut your strip. Now, what you might need to do, once you've got it in the position, you might need to bring your ruler down so that you've got your pear drop where your um, rotary cutter goes into. You might just need to bring that down, trying to keep it as straight as you can, just so that you've got that space to get your rotary cutter in. So I'm going for the nine and a half here and here. And the marks are there and there. <coughs> so so it's, this it's is a the visual. 10 square in the middle? 
No, it's a nine and a half. So oh. if you had got a layer cake, you could use layer cakes. And just trim it down a bit. Trim them down a bit. So we'll cut up there and we'll cut up that side. So then we've got a strip of the width that we need. And then we can turn our fabric round and we can do the same thing just remembering where we were before. If I'm looking at my nine, I just want to come up this way a little bit, I think. Oh, and that's good. And it really does make it really quick and easy to see, because I think sometimes if you're trying to do it on your mat or with a, just the ordinary ruler, you can't always see. And mm. your template plastic, I don't know that it's, it, you might be able to get your square out of your template plastic and make one so that you can see. I'm just trying to think what size, because template plastic is nine, it's um, A4, isn't it? How yeah. wide is an A4 piece of paper? I'm not sure if that is actually nine inches in the end, but it would give you an idea, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Um, <coughs> but you can see that your stripology there That's just makes job, that it? a really quick way of cutting your square. Beautiful. And accurate as well. Now, going back to the white background. Yeah. Aunt Liz Crangle says you should always have white flowers in the garden to show the colours of the other ones off. Yes. I hadn't thought about that, but you are so right. Yeah. Have you seen our magnolia tree at the minute? I know, it's beautiful. I oh. love magnolia. We're going to um, try was, and make pickle I was, out I of it. I had a magnolia tree and I, was, I didn't get it planted quickly enough and, of course, it didn't survive in the tub. Oh, no. I'm very sad about that. Yeah. They say, don't they, that you should look at what's growing around you in other people's gardens to know what will thrive in your garden. Oh, and okay. We've got quite a lot of, of neighbours that have got magnolia trees, and they do look lovely. <coughs> Just not in pots. No, they don't survive in pots, funnily enough. We found um, a recipe for uh, pickled magnolia petals. Oh. Have you ever tried one? No. They taste gingery. Oh, do they? Mm, they're really nice. Oh, right. They're really nice. So that's this week's job, is to pickle some magnolia. Pickle magnolia. Yeah. Right. I've got all sorts of bits here. I'm just going to lay them out just so that I can make sure I get the right piece, because some of them are very similar sizes. Whilst you do that, we've had a lovely message from Joy, and I'm only going to read this because I was concerned. Do you know why? Because... Last week, when we had the velvets, somebody asked if you could odor coat the velvets. And I didn't see the message, and I didn't say, no, only woven fabrics, really, yeah. with the odor coat. And then I saw, I packed an order which had velvets and odor coat in, and I wasn't sure if it was from the same person that had asked if you could odor coat velvets, and I was worried. Yes. However, Joy says, thank you for my order of odor coat and beautiful fabric yesterday. It arrived yesterday. It is my pet hate odor coating, but they changed their applicator to make a more rounded shape. Yeah, it's now hidden in the lid. Oh, right. Because we rang them and said, you haven't sent the applicator. And they're like, open the pot. Yeah. So we did, and it's actually now in the lid. Oh, that's good. Because I was sent, I packed mm. one up and I was like, oh, there's no. No, no, they're in there. They're in there. Cool. Um, so she says, got the job done far quicker without spreading the stuff throughout my workroom. So thank you. Um, oh, and gorgeous fabric squirrel moment. <laughs> so I'm glad. I'm glad because I just had this horrible mo uh, horrible thought and I couldn't find the message to see who it was. Yes. And I thought if I just go putting random messages in people's orders going, make sure you don't to go to velvet, <laughs> they're going to think I've gone mad. Yes. Which is also an option. So we've, it's very straightforward. We're, st we're going to frame the square with the white to start with. Mm -hmm. um, using the strips <coughs> of fabric, all your measurements are in your pattern. Mm -hmm. Gemma and I have double checked it this morning. Hopefully it's all right because there is a lot of cutting. But your stripology does make life a lot easier. Sure does. Oh, nice, Liz. She said, gone mad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean, as I took my dog and duck for a walk yesterday. No idea. <laughs> oh, no, Jane. The bolt end with the goldfish. It's gone. Has gone. 
Jim has just sent me a message. She said it's sold, which I'm a little distraught about. Oh, bless her. <laughs> We're so funny, aren't we? We have all the opportunity to buy the fabrics, and we're Gemma and I are both the same. Well, let the customers have theirs first. <laughs> if there's any left, we'll have some. And then we have remorse forever after. You do have remorse. Do you know what? I've made quite difficult for everyone. I've made it quite difficult for Gemma to actually load the zebra because I forgot to take a photo of it. Oh. So could you possibly chuck it this way, Jane? Let's no, find it. Can't. Where is it? It's hidden under here. Yeah, it's just on the back of the set. Just chuck it your way. Oh, there we go. Thanks, I've got a really squeaky chair, by the way. If you're wondering what the strange noises are, <laughs> it's my squeaky chair. So we're just going to press these strips away from the centre square. So I always give it a press first while it's... and then press it back. There we go. And then we're going to put the white strip on the top and the bottom. So I always start side and side and then top and bottom. Just with this quilt, what I will say is these blocks just be sure that you keep a consistent quarter inch seam because there's quite a few seams in it. Um, so don't do that thing that I do, start something here, then go to Cornwall. And yeah, then, and use a different machine. Yeah. No, don't do that. My presser foot is lowered. Come on. Does it not to work to. for me? Why is it not working? It's just working before. Oh, well. Just turn it off and on, Jane. I would. I think I will. Just having a moment. Thank you. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. Um, sometimes it's quite nice to see other people have moments with their machines. Yeah. There we go. And <coughs> um, I say this quite a lot. Make one block to see how it goes together. Mm. And then you can chain piece the rest of your blocks. Mm, perfect. Because it's all, you know, it's squares. Edge, you go round the blocks each time very easy to chain piece it. It just makes life a lot easier. Do you have to keep track of, of things? Do you have to do some things around the other way around or is it just quite no, it's all No, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, as I say, I always work, start on the sides and then go top and bottom. Right. But that's not essential because it, because we start with a square, it'll work whether you want to do top and bottom and then the sides. And then it's just a case of, you know, each time pressing away from the centre block. So we framed, oops, we framed um, the block. Now, you may find as you're going round that the, the fabric, just be careful when you're adding, you can see I've gone a little bit under the hair and it's come over on this side. So just be careful when you're, take your time and probably pin when you're adding your strips. Would so, you trim that down then on the... I probably would if okay. if I'd got, but because <coughs> I'd come over a little bit on that one. But I can see if I lay that on there, I can see that that all goes straight. And it, it you know, it doesn't do any harm, does it? Just to pop a pin in, just to hold it before you start to sew. Now you say that, Jane. I've been so, so, so um, clumsy. I don't know what's wrong with me, just. I think sometimes you have phases, don't you, when that happens? And Do you think I'm growing? Yeah, that's what be. it is. Because Freddie gets really clumsy when he grows. Yeah, and I think sometimes hormonal changes can make you a little bit... Oh, there we go then. 
Uh, and of course, we do spend a lot of our time rushing around, don't we? That is awesome. And they say, don't they, more haste, less speed. Yes. I don't really understand what that means though. Well, it usually means that if you go rushing around, you, you end up making mistakes, which then means you slows you down anyway, because you have to go back and, or you knock things over, which then you have to clear up. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, and so this has got a pub round by her called the Dog and Duck. Oh. I should take Dave and that's Mabel. Quite, um, that's quite a popular name for a, a pub, yeah. isn't it, the Dog and Duck? I think it's got a hunting connotation. Oh. Because Mabel um, would not like that. No, although she is a, a spaniel, but she's a show spaniel, isn't she? She's a show cocker. Yeah. Yeah. So she's not supposed to muddy herself and go collecting. Sully dogs. herself. Yeah, in any, in any kind game. of way. However, <laughs> she rolled in something. She's rolled in something this morning, hasn't she? she? Stinks. Yeah. And then she just flushes those beautiful eyelashes at you and you're just like, oh. I love the fact that she's got one set of eyelashes. This is my dog, if anyone's... Well, she's in the Who's Mabel? On <laughs> um, and she's got one eyelash set that's black and one eyelash set that's white. Yes. She's really rather lovely. Matches lovely. her markings. <coughs> <coughs> but she's got eyelashes that people would pay a lot of money to have. <laughs> oh, they are They're just exquisite, amazing. aren't they? So we've done the two sides there, and we're going to go top and bottom again with the, the stripey fabric. And again, you may just want to make sure that's lined up and pop a pin in it just to nice. keep it in place while you take it to the machine and stop it moving around. Now, you know, Jane, how Mabel's name means much loved? I didn't realise that, yeah. but she is. Yes. And she is like the least aggressive dog. We always joke with any anyone that arrives, we go, oh, don't mind security. Um, yeah, we're like, get back, you big savage <laughs> beastie. Calm down. <laughs> um, As she gently wanders out, wagging her tail and sniffs <laughs> their knees. And batting her eyelashes <laughs> at them. Well, she was in um, in the chick room the other day. Oh, yeah. Now, the chicks are in the old Great Dane cage. Oh, yeah. Under a heat lamp. But they can get out. Of, oh, can they? Well, they couldn't until, until this last week. Oh, they right. could get out of, and then whenever they saw anyone, they just all scurried back in. So oh, it wasn't oh, really a problem. Them. And um, and Dave's too big to get out now, so he's in there with them. Anyway, someone had left the door open. Oh no! And Mr. Mortimer, the naughty cat, naughty Morty, just came in to see what was on the menu. Mabel was having none of it. Really? Did she see him off? She was having none of it. I said to Josh, what on earth was that noise? What on earth was Mabel barking at? It's like Morty. She was barking at Morty. She chased him out of there. She was not having anyone at all coming at her chicks think? and ducks. And normally, bearing in mind that Morty's normally the one that beats her up. I was quite impressed at her guard dog skill. She's like a nanny dog. Yeah. I think I worked out why it's doing it. Why it's because it's on when you cut the needle, Is it's it on, on that it'll automatically automatic. lift the foot. So if you then lift the foot, it's getting confused, I think. I think that's what I it think is. I used to have that problem with it before. It's only because yours isn't set up the same. No, and you and get so you used, use don't you? Machine. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get so used <coughs> to the settings. And that's the beauty of the Duke is you can set them, can't you, to lift the foot, leave the needle in, lift the foot, have the needle up, cut the thread for you. It's just, they're just fabulous. Love it. Oh, Joe says tomato sauce gets rid of unwanted rolling smells, tried and tested. Oh, I'd heard that, yes. Because if... In America, if you get sprayed by a skunk, they, they say to, to wash yourself in tomato juice because a skunk smell is, is really hard to, is to get like rid of. Fox? Worse. Oh. Worse, worse, oh. yeah. And they say bath yourself in um, tomato juice. Right. So it, we've it, got the framed square now. So that's beautifully framed with our white and then our, our stripy fabric. And we're now going to make the wider border, which forms those interlocking squares. So we've got a deeper piece of our background fabric. And this is where we bring in our, our plain green. And we're going to put 
um, a little strip either side of those and we want four of those because we've got four sides to our square so I'll work my way through that and again this is a great opportunity for chain piecing there you go um aunt lizzie is concerned as to whether or not tomato juice will stain mabel's white bits but to be <laughs> honest at this point i don't mind and to be fair the other morning mabel was sporting pink tufty bits in her I top saw mark. your Facebook post of that. Somebody had been colouring her in. Mm. Mm. I can remember sitting in class being bored and, and getting a felt pen and colouring my hair. And the teacher, you know, when you're listening, you're sort of listening in class, but you're not really paying attention. Yeah. And then you realise that the class has gone quiet. And they're all looking at and you. And they're all looking at me. And the yeah. teacher said, Would you like to explain what you're doing? <laughs> I was just like, No. <laughs> Not really. Not really, no. But does it look <laughs> fabulous? <laughs> but I've got lovely blue know. streaks in my hair. <laughs> well, so this is this is it, you see. Um, mm. Emily Emily came home the other day and said, could she dye her hair? And I said, you're five. No. <laughs> um, she doesn't but nice see try. somebody. Yeah. And I think what it is, is that there are kids at school that have got hair chalks. Yes. Yeah. And I, I don't really know what this is, but I think it's a thing. Yeah. Um, literally chalk, isn't it, that they can colour their hair with and it washes out straight away. Yeah. Um, I mean, what that does to the condition of your hair, I've got absolutely no idea. But given that she's taken to chewing the ends of her hair, I don't think the condition is really in question because it's pretty wrecked. Um, <laughs> and um, so I think she just thought that... That just her normal pens would do the same, right? Yeah. That was it. And then she tried to deny that it was her, and I'm like, well, there is a pink pen on your bedroom floor without a lid on it, so... <laughs> I mean, I'm no Sherlock, but... Meh. Yeah, sort of adds up. It's like the time that Freddie and Abiro wrote on the lovely mustard velvet chair, Freddie! <laughs> and then tried to deny it was him. I'm like, well, genius, try not writing your own name. And Emily, at the same age, did exactly the same thing. Yeah. Like, why? Why, why, why? Write somebody else's name if you don't want to get caught. Liz is just enjoying how um, organised you are. It's a case of having to be. And I would recommend that you, when you get your pattern and you have a read through it, that you, when you're doing your cutting, that you sort of label the pieces. Because some of them are quite similar in sizes, and so it would be easy to pick okay. up the wrong one. Yeah, I'd do that. We've all done it. Yeah. We've all been there and done that. There's something quite satisfying there about being organised for a quilt, I think. Yes. It's all part, I think it's all part of the preparation, isn't it? You know, like ironing, starching and ironing your fabric. Yeah, so when I Choosing your colours and... When I have multiple shows over at Crate and Craft, I do show bags. Yes. Um, and so I prep for each, so every, every, and half the time I don't use them. No, but it's and really quite satisfying having them all in a yeah. little bag ready to go. So they go out, and then of course I might dip into a bit of this and a dip of that and what have you, and I hate unpacking them when I get back. <laughs> if you notice, they're all just still sitting around. Well, they're handy, aren't they? You've got them there ready for next time. <sighs> but it's never the same show. No. It's never the same show, so I've got to now unpack them. I'm loving the little light on this iron. It's good, isn't it? It's really cute. Can you imagine when you're ironing your, your Lewis and Irene glow in the darks? <gasps> oh, Jane! <laughs> it'd be just, everything would be sparkling as you were pressing it. I don't know if I can get any more, because they limit it to six. I don't know if that's six in total or just six at a time. Mm. These would be great for when you go to workshops and things to have in your bag, particularly because yeah. they've got that silicon thing that covers the base. So if it's not quite cold when you when you come to pack it away, it it's going to protect it, isn't it? it? Yeah, it clips onto the base yeah. as well. It's very clever. And I noticed it's got a hanging loop as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just... They think of everything, don't they? They have. I was in two minds whether to get it, because I thought at first it was going to be one of the ones that, that you know, they do their, the I've got one iron, that lifts, yeah. Which is fine. Until you come to use an ordinary iron and you forget. Yeah. 
scorch your ironing board. Which worries me. Yeah. And that's exactly the sort of thing that I have maybe possibly done. So, uh, I'm, yeah. So, but this one doesn't do that, so I was quite pleased. And I was like, yes, I'll get that. So now we've got four units that look something like that. And we've got small pieces, smaller pieces that go either side to make a short side for the sides. And then we've got longer pieces that go on the other two pieces for the top and bottom. So again, I'll just chain piece these bits on so you can see. It's not the most thrilling sewing, I know. Now, Jane, last night, Emily and I started making her Easter bonnet. Oh, how lovely. Now, yeah, sorry, mine is set up differently to you, isn't it? Yeah, so I just pressed the wrong part of the foot. Sorry. It's um, all right. So... Yeah, Easter bonnets for Friday, last day of the term. Now, tell me your child is OCD without telling me your child <laughs> yeah. is OCD. She's not a mother's daughter, is she? Oh, my goodness. And I swear, I just... What do your parents say to you? Uh, that I got everything I deserved. <laughs> It's oh, not always said in a nice way either. No, oh, it's oh. a shame. But they just laugh and go, yep, everything you deserve, right oh. there. Um, She's a sweetie. But yeah, and I'm just slightly concerned because I don't think they're going to believe she did it by herself. Oh, right. Well, no, because she's she is very artistic, isn't she? I know. But is it? Well, the fabulous. I'm going to go and find it. Are you busy sewing there for a second? Yeah. Well, if I'm going to go on a front angle so everybody can see. Yeah. And I'm just going to creep out. I've got extra range on my on my new microphone, Jean. I need to go and find it. Hang on. Microphones, aren't they? So yeah, it's it's. It's a lovely project and it will come together quite quickly once you've got that, that initial way that the block goes together. You'll get your other ones made fairly quickly because there's so much chain piecing you can do. It's quite satisfying. It's all gone very quiet now because there's no Natasha talking. Of... So you've now got two borders, one that's slightly longer than the other. Now, I pressed my seams in towards the green. So on this one, I always say, don't I, when I'm pressing my seams, have the fabric that you want the seam to go under on the top just makes life easier. So we've got that one there, and then we'll turn that over. And we've got that one there. Oh, look at that. I've got specs on. You've got to go close up. Uh, I'll leave you to go close up, Jane. I've got to go and pop this in. Honestly, they've, they've got spectacles on the, the chicks. Look at this. Can you see? On. But I promise you, I just put the glue on. Yeah. That's all I did. I just, because I don't really trust her with pin filet glue. But look how she spaced those rabbits. Yeah, alternating them. Alternating them. She spaced them perfectly. Yeah. Just Isn't by it? eye. <laughs> just like, what? They've got glasses on. <laughs> Did they come with glasses on? Did she yeah. put glasses on? No, them? they came with glasses oh, on. Oh, they're just so cute. But the beautiful ribbon. This is gorgeous. That's the ribbon that came in the 13.9 meter length. Yeah. And the rabbits have gone into um, Easter wreath kits for tomorrow. <coughs> that is beautiful. She's so clever. But I just don't think, I honestly don't think, Jane, that they're going to believe that she did it. Really? By herself. Well, 
That's all not, by her own. All by her own, yeah. I don't know. Her ears were probably burning at the weekend because I was telling everybody how she says all by my own. All by my and own. And what yeah. she'd said about um, she might be an independent woman, but she need, could she have some help with her tie yeah. laces? <laughs> yeah, I'm a strong, I'm a strong independent woman. But please, could you tie up my laces? <laughs> I love her. <laughs> yes. She was. T she came in this morning and said, "Good morning, Jane." And I said, "Oh, hi, Ems." And I looked at her and I said, "Oh, have you got a mufti day today?" And she said, "No." And or I did said, she look oh. quite quite put out by the thought of? And I don't I said, think she knows oh, what Do you not day is. have to wear? Do you not have to wear your uniform then today? And she said, no, because I'm going on a school trip. I said, oh, right, where are you going? She said, to Wonderland, like I should know where Wonderland was and what it was. I said, oh, that sounds nice. She said, yes, I don't know what we're going to do, but I think we'll have a nice time. Yes, she's, um, yeah. So this, the excitement for this school trip has been going on for weeks now. Yes. I hope it's good because otherwise... They'll be much upset. Um, but she was really excited just to go on a coach. Yes. So if it's the a bar, white one. It, well, it wasn't. It was grey. Oh, right. Um, she told me it was going to be a white one. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, because when we got to school this morning, I said, oh, that's your coach. Said, no, it can't be. It's not white. <laughs> it's like, right. well, given you're the only ones on a school trip, I'm going to say it might well be that one. Can we go overhead for this? Tasha? Yeah. I just want to Sorry. explain about some lining up now that we're going to do. So we've got our two short pieces that go side and side. We've got the stripe here. Now, what we need to do is we need to line that stripe up with the frame, the white frame. So the edge of the green, and because we've pressed those one way and one the other way, we can nestle that seam there. Just line up your, the edge of your border with your edge of your block but just make sure that this seam here, the inside edge of that seam, lines up with your frame. And the same on this end. So if you've got a, a bit of this piece here that's maybe a little bit longer, that's fine. It's more important that you get that lined up there just because it shows, it, it sits better. And if the seams aren't lined up, it will be obvious when you're looking at your block. Okay. And Got you it. You can do that on both sides. Okay. Yeah. Aunt Susie says, I'd like to hear the teachers try and question Emily about the bonnet. Yeah. 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 I'm sure that the other children will have bonnets that <laughs> look equally as wonderful that have had lots of help with them. <laughs> I mean... I came in this morning and because um, we'd been doing it yeah. here last night and um, we were just setting up the show, me and Josh. I was like, oh, yeah, tell me that Emily's been in here without telling me that Emily's been in here. <laughs> and we'd got lots of, um, you know, we had those motifs, those like sparkly motif packets. Yes. There were like 50 of them, the hearts and stars and flowers and things in it. Yeah. And she'd had one of those because I said, do you want to add anything else to it? You know, mm -hmm. more is more, clearly. And, um, and she'd separated them all out, <laughs> all across my desk <laughs> in size and shape oh, order. Oh, bless her. <laughs> like, oh, no. I'd be very surprised if she isn't in some sort of... Um, crafting prof profession when she comes to it because she does love it and she's very good <coughs> at it. She's asked if she can go into business with me. <laughs> can you cope with that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She's very dynamic. Natasha and daughter, I don't know. Yeah. She won't stand any nonsense, I know that. Crikey. Yeah. But she does have good eye for detail. Yes, yeah, she does. Right, so we've got the sides sewn on. 
and this time we're going to press the seam so it goes underneath the stripe so we'll have the stripe facing upwards give that a press and then press that away and this is primarily because you don't really want to have the fabric showing on the white if I press that the other way you'd be able to see that stripe fabric through the white which might be a bit of a distraction so we just make sure that that seam and also because there's less seams there so it's going to sit flatter yeah, that's the thing isn't it? you know when yeah. I did the um, the applique quilt I quite liked having the white extra border of the seam yes uh, that sometimes it just gives another dimension yeah it's so we've got our right we've got our long sides now that are going to go top and bottom and again we're going to line up this seam edge here with the inside of that white frame just so, so it, clever it just sits nicely and visually it sort of it's tidy. Yeah. And I see that this is good. Ginny said her three year old poppy would always say, I do it or buy my soft. <laughs> She's 38 tomorrow. Happy birthday. And Sue said, My eldest isn't Emily. She was very like your Emily, except her standard go to was, I can do it on my own. <laughs> so she always pronounces it, um, pronounces own as Roan. Mm. They become phrases, don't they, within the family? <coughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. Isaac used to say, I can't like it. When he didn't like something, he wouldn't say, I don't like it. He'd say, I can't like it. So we quite often now, we still say, oh, no, I can't like that. <laughs> and that's fair enough. I mean, he's got a point. I mean, if you can't like it, you can't like it. Yeah. yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You do have those things. Yeah. And my cousin's little boy, he used to call it, he didn't call it McDonald's, he called it Black Donald's. And yep. he couldn't say the must, so it was always Black Donald's. And it, we called it Black Donald's for <laughs> quite a while. <coughs> Black Donald's. Please excuse me coughing. I don't feel ill, just a stupid cough. It just leaves you with a tickly cough, doesn't it? And it's just, it just there's no rhyme or reason to it. it just You just yeah. cough and, it, yeah. and once you start, you can't stop. Oh no. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks. Oh come on. Yes. I'll do it my own. I like it because I keep forgetting. We are reading a brilliant book at the moment. We've been, uh, so for those of you that have small children of a still, I say small children, Freddie's 10 and I still read every night to them. Yeah. Well, there's, I think there's something comforting though, isn't there, about having somebody read to you? Yeah, and also it's just, it's that, that time and I always stay with them until they both go to sleep. Yes, so sometimes that's... you can have conversations, can't you, that you might not necessarily have any other time. Yeah, because life is busy and, you know, but, um, yeah, she can't hear me, if I, that one really... Have you switched yourself off? Have your batteries run out? No, I've got battery here. Am I on mute? Can I use it as well? No. I'm unmuted. 
While Natasha's sorting her microphone out, I'm just pressing these seams. And again, I'm pressing them so they go underneath the, the stripy fabric. <laughs> she can't do everything. <laughs> So just having the stripy fabric facing upwards, and that's um, just caught there. So if I wasn't doing this quickly for demonstration, I might just unpick that bit, fold that seam back, and then um, go over it again, just so that it wasn't sticking out and showing on the white. And I would just um, trim these sticking out edges here just trim those level um, you'll know from your measurements how wide your seam should be how wide your border should be so you just can work out from the oh somebody at the door there's somebody at the door because we're only a skeleton staff there's <laughs> any Natasha or I that can answer it. Right, so we've got that board bit on now. You can see how that's coming together. And now we've got strips with our white. These are all the same size, similar to these size ones. And then we've got four slightly smaller and four a little bit longer. And we're going to sew these either side of our white so again a lovely opportunity for chain piecing which not only saves time sewing wise it also saves you also saves you some thread just because these sizes are quite similar just make sure you don't get them muddled up and and sew one of the slightly shorter sop ones with one of the slightly longer ones. Ask me how I know that happens. I might have done it a few times when I was making my sample. It's very easy to pick the wrong one up. This is why I say it's always helpful to label your pieces, even if it's putting them in a bag with a label on or something similar. Quite often just use a sticker with the measurement on. Am I back? Can anybody hear me? Are you working now? I don't know. They'll soon tell you if you're not if you're not back on the sound. Apparently so so says you can't sort your mic out by your own. <laughs> no, I can't. No. no. And then you won, so I don't actually know what I'm doing. Have we got tech support in the building today? No, it's Birmingham at a meeting. Oh, how inconvenient is that? It's telling me you can't go to meetings on, on, on show days. <laughs> Can you just move your shoulder ever so slightly? Yes. Is that better? Yeah. Standing in front of the camera. I get so involved in what I'm doing, I forget about the camera. The, um, it hasn't so... Have I come unthreaded? Yes. Let's just raise that needle up. Just re-thread ourselves. There we go. I'm just going to sit quietly in the corner, Jane. Oh. There we go. And then we'll do the other.
lining that up, making sure that I don't keep forgetting about the back of this. I think if I turn the foot pedal around, it might stop me stepping on the wrong bit. <laughs> So we've got our short strip and two long strips. The centerpiece is the same size. Now on this one, because we've got the, the green seams going in, <coughs> we actually want to have the green facing the white. And it's quite straightforward to just finger press these ones because they're such a short seam. It's quite easy to do. And of course, then we've got the opportunity then to nest the seams. And it's quite important to nest the seams on this middle part. So the green strip is going over the green strip in your border and nesting against that piece there. And this is what I say, if you're a beginner, it's not difficult to do it. It just takes a little bit of thinking about just to make sure that you've got everything lined up. And then you've got, that's going that way and that's going that way. And we can do that on both sides. And I think it's good just to take the, you know, the time just to pin that, just to make sure that it is in the place that you want it to be. Because sometimes as you're sewing, the fabric can stretch and you'll get to the other side and you'll think, well, it lined up before and now it's not lining up. But um, by pinning it, you'll just make sure that it stays where it needs to be. Make sure that's lined up on the edge of the fabric. Might do. It tends to work for most things, doesn't it? Just reset it. There we go. So we're going to press those away from the from that main. And you can see there how those line up nicely just by taking that time to make sure that the seams are nestled and it gives the illusion of that square then sitting behind and so we then put these strips on in a similar way just making sure it's much easier to trim if you've gone you know if you've got excess to trim it off on the ends than it is to and this is why I say it's quite important to make sure you keep a consistent seam allowance and um, just take your time to pin to make sure everything's lined up. It's, it's is the square, so if the seams are slightly out, 
and you could have a close look at mine you'll see that some of them don't quite sit against but you know you wouldn't know you can't see no you know from from the distance not. you you get the effect that you need it wouldn't win any awards in a competition but you know we're not about that start again. I can unpick that little bit that's gone a little bit wide there. You come stand next to me so that I can pick I up your microphone. I to near <laughs> you, yes, with my big boomy voice because I tried turning it off and on. I have no idea. No idea. Oh, it's so frustrating when it doesn't work the way you want it to, isn't and it's a it? It's new system as well, so yeah. it's not like the other ones which I think normally quite didn't make work. Never mind. Now, Jane, this cooked we haven't actually spoken about it. We've said everything that's in it. Yes. But we haven't told you that there's £10 off the whole kit. Wow. So it's a very generous discount on there. If you are a Natasha McCarthy Design Premium member, of course you get an extra 10% off on top of that. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's nice. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Eh? That's yeah. lovely. Um, so, and you are getting a lot of fabric in this. There is, isn't there? Because, I mean, yeah. there's three metres on, on of the... Plain alone. On the white, and then there's a metre and a quarter of the green, so that's four and a quarter. Three quarters of the the comb stripe, so that's five. I just I've not seen anything like this. So there we go. That's the block. Beautiful. So when you come to put your quilt together, you're going to have um, width um, strips that are the same width as your block. And at this point, I've given you the measurements in the pattern, but everybody's seam allowance is slightly different. So it might be worth just measuring how big your block is and cutting your strips accordingly. It should all work out maths wise, but some people's seam allowance is a little bit wider. It adds up, doesn't it? Well, yeah. Under that number of seams, it can yeah. really add up. There's so many seams. So we just place the strip on the left hand side of each of the blocks, all three blocks. Lay your blocks out and have a look at them and then you can rearrange the, the, mm. the pattern if you want to and then once you've got it in the way you want it left hand side of all of the blocks join the three together in a row and then add one strip onto the right hand side of that row got it okay and then you'll join um, the strip you'll have some little squares of your sashing so you join one square onto the left hand side of your strip and you'll join three of those together like so and then you'll add a square onto the end of that strip and they go between your blocks. Or shall we show? So you can see this is the sashing strip here and all you need to do when you come to these pieces here these seams, um, I, I press them towards the green. Yeah, and then these ones I pressed that way. So you can nestle them. So the white goes towards the white and towards the white on here. So when you come to join those squares into there, you can nestle those. But if you wanted to make your cushion just with your your sashing with your cushion, you just add a sashing strip to each side and then you'd put a square on each and you could add that 
into the corners and that would give that. And then there's a, just a slightly wider, just plain white border that then goes on all the way around just to finish it off. And that was two widths of fabric that I joined together with the 45 degree seam and then cut it. And again, what I would recommend, I've given you the measurements in the pattern, but I would recommend that you measure your quilt through the middle, not along the edge, through the middle, and just check the measurements against your quilt. Because there might just be a slight difference, as I say, with seam allowance and things like that. It Got can it. just fluctuate slightly. But that's how it all goes together. Oh, Jane, that's fabulous. That so is fabulous. It's just so different. Yeah. I just I love it. it I like the I like the secondary pattern that's created with these little yeah. borders here and then adding that little square in. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Ten pounds off this kit and a lot of money off the wadding as well. Yeah, that wadding is really worth getting for your stash. Whether you use it for this, whether you use it for a different one, just having that, that amount. Yeah, that size piece of wadding would do two smallish quilts or lots of cushions or runners or anything it's really good to have and at the price you've you put it on it's yeah. really worth getting and the thing is is that you can use it in lieu of an interfacing if you have a spray adhesive yeah so you can spray base and use it for your bags and anything like that yeah you can wad your bags then and, and quilt your bags all that sort of stuff yeah so it's really worth adding when we first started out we used um off cuts yeah all the time. Right, we didn't have Starville, H640, we didn't have all of those things. No. When we first started out, I was looking back through some early patterns. Lots of you, by the way, thank you, going for the um, three Lucky Dipper patterns for six ninety nine. It's a nice idea. Yeah, you know, and yeah. we just, we have we have them there. It's that, or I shed them and shred just them and use them for uh, rabbit bedding, <laughs> which I'd rather not do. I'd rather that they went to a good home. It's just that they're not always absolutely immaculate no, they, might they might have be a, a bit curled slight. edge or something yeah. but the first thing you're going to do is fold it open anyway yes it just means that you're not the first person to have folded it open or uh, some of them are immaculate yeah they're just we overprinted. so yeah for those of you that offer is still up this is here the waddings here we have a few more bolt ends to add today i've got a few more batiks to add nice. tomorrow so tomorrow is all about easter um, do you decorate for Easter? A little bit, not I, not as much as I do at Christmas, but I like a to have bit, like yeah. a table centre or something like that, just yeah. to make it look a bit festive. That kind of thing. Yeah. And I often find that actually my my Easter stuff, if it's not too Easter, if it's just more springy, yeah, stays up, yeah, for a little bit longer. Um, so we have got all sorts of goodies for you, plus new cartonage kits. Mm -hmm. We've got caddies, we've got jewellery boxes, and we've got a really handy thing that you can keep your spools. I saw that. I yeah. was like, mm, I might have mm. one of those. Plus beautiful fabrics. There's a lot on tomorrow's show. Nice. Bits of this, bits of that. It's a bitza show. A bitza show. Lovely. Bits of this, bits of that. Um, deals galore. Nice. Yeah. Um, so we will see you tomorrow here at 10 o'clock. Jane, thank you so much. What a lovely, lovely quilt. Um, yeah. yeah, we will see you here. Thank you ever so much for watching. Sorry for all the tech stuff. <laughs> it has no hope. It's no the, one techie me, in the building. It's just me, it's just me and Natasha. And we've got no chance. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it's okay. It's, it's, it's all good it fun. Yeah. <laughs> We will see you here tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye.